In the last video, I promised that I would make one about advanced database setups, as I believe that you might not be getting as much depth out of Football Manager as you could be. So th this is that video. I know your time is valuable, but I still want to make sure that we cover all the main bullet points for this topic, as well as try to anticipate some of the questions that may arise from it. I've been using variations of these setups on virtually all of my saves since FM21, and especially my stream saves over on Twitch, where you can find me live Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Sundays, so drop a follow there too. I believe that the initial game setup is one of the most underutilized parts of FM. Most people just select the league they want to play in, a couple of surrounding leagues, hit large database, and then boom. I'm here to tell you, there's a better way. This is not a guide to tell you to set things up the exact same way as me, more to provide several options for you as well as an understanding of them and what they do so that you can hopefully make the best decisions for your save. That said, I will pop my exact custom database setup file in the description for you to download and drop in at your leisure and be on your merry way, uh, but more on that later. I've also found something rather interesting regarding view only leagues, but we'll very much get to that at the end. When you start a brand new career in FM, after you've hit career and selected the club you wanted to manage and also added in any custom database files at this point, some of you might hit quick start here, but I imagine most of you at this point will choose to hit advanced setup. In here, you select the various leagues that you want, the database size you want, and various other options down here, blah, blah, blah. The age old issue here though, is that the more leagues you add, the slower the game is gonna be because of the processing. And FM23 already feels a decent amount slower than some of its predecessors, but that's neither here nor there. And especially for those of you with lower end PCs and laptops, this will severely limit the number of leagues that you can have loaded. And then in the future could potentially affect the experience that you have when it comes to things like scouting. But what I'm about to show you will let you run a hell of a lot more players while still being faster than other setups. For now, we're going to assume that you want a one club save. So for this example, we're going to choose Ajax in the Netherlands because reasons. Uh, however, if you are doing a journeyman save, we'll talk about some tweaks for this a little bit later. But for now, let's just keep things basic. So we've added the Dutch leagues. We've got them set to play, but all this stuff is done. We've got a large database. We're ready to go. Hey, presto. But once that's done, we head over to the database option in the top right. We hit advanced and that is where the fun begins. You'll be presented with this menu. So you're gonna to wanna to go over to continents, then hit, uh, in this case, Europe for an example. Then these are the options that I choose to tick for these. These are my favorite ones that really get you started. So you'll wanna have ticked current international players, players from clubs in continental competition, and most importantly, players from top division clubs. Those for me are the three most important of these features, but I tend to add players from top clubs and players with continental reputation as well. It doesn't change this number down here a great deal, but it can sometimes fill in some gaps. But you'll have noticed that the number in the bottom right-hand corner will have been increased dramatically doing that, as well as the stars through the frosted glass effect also decreasing. But we won't worry about that for the moment. I would heavily advise against ticking players of nationality because, well, I mean, you can see 300. <laughs> it's a lot of players. It's not really necessary. Then just do the same exact thing for all of the other continents or season to taste. And you should end up then with something that looks a little bit like this, if you're following me exactly. Out of interest, if you did download my custom game setup file, then you put it in this folder that you're seeing on the screen right now. You then go down once you get to this menu to load custom setup. It should be in here as optimal setup, just hit load. Uh, the number in the bottom right hand corner might not immediately change, but once you hit OK, it should actively update and then you can go back in and tweak anything that you might choose to in here as well. And if you set things up the exact same way as me, you should have roughly 106,000 players loaded. This will vary depending on what league you've chosen as your main league though, as some will have more players loaded depending on how deep you go. So then we hit OK. And at this point, the game is going to start screaming at you that the world is ending and you need to go and seek shelter. Do not heed these warnings for they are false prophecies. This text here and the stars directly relate to the number itself and not how fast or slow the game is actually going to be. Using a standard setup, that would actually be correct. But for this one, I wouldn't worry about seeing a star or even half star here and it's saying that it's slow. If you've got like 400,000 players loaded, then maybe at that point it's time to heed the warnings. But the world, the world might actually be ending for you. But anything around about this and you should be absolutely fine. So what difference does all of this make? So what we've actually done is we've essentially told the game to load the players from these nations or that meet these requirements, but not the leagues themselves. The advantage this has is it means that the game no longer has to process fixtures and all of that fancy nonsense from all of those leagues, but it can still load the players into the clubs. And the key thing about that is that means you can see them and sign them in your saves. The best thing about this though, is that the game will try to keep that number in the bottom right hand corner relatively balanced throughout the save without it dropping too low or going too high. There was an issue a couple of FMs ago where the number was heavily dropping as clubs were not producing regens. That does no longer exist. And it means that in order to keep this number nicely, the clubs from all these nations will continue to produce nice big youth intakes for you to go and scour through and sign the next wonder kid that you've wanted from Armenia. As a side note, I always have add players to playable teams ticked down here, and this is generally the setup I run for most of my saves. Obviously, you might want to disable player attribute masking if you feel like a slightly easier time of it, but it's up to you, really. So you're probably now thinking, cool, but surely this slows the game down. 
And the answer is yes, but not as much as you might think. I wanted to get some actual numbers on this for you, so I ran a series of tests. The first of which was with both of the top two divisions in the Netherlands set to playable with me as the Ajax manager and a large database. I then simmed from July 4th through to January 1st the following year. It took 15 minutes and 32 seconds. I was still in charge of the club, but I was holidaying and had everything assigned to other people. So that's sort of what you can expect with the most bare minimum of databases. So obviously it would be the fastest. I then needed a point of comparison. So I set up a similar test with almost the exact same parameters, except this time, instead of a large database, I used my custom 106,000 player database with all the players loaded. I simmed the exact same time frame, and this time it took 22 minutes and 15 seconds. And you're probably thinking, oh, that is a hell of a slowdown. And you would be right. But here's the kicker. I then ran a third test with the default database selected as large, but then adding the top five leagues from around Europe in addition to the Dutch leagues. So the top two divisions in each of those leagues, bringing us to a grand total of around about 35,000 players. I then ran that same exact test again, and this time it took 25 minutes and 52 seconds to run the exact same spread. And all this extra time was being eaten up by the game having to process the fixtures and all sorts of other detritus from these leagues that you weren't even managing it. So from a value for player standpoint, it loses out massively. As a side note, if you are doing a journeyman save, you're obviously going to want to have a smattering of different leagues loaded, particularly if you want to manage in different countries during it. But never fear, you could just select a few of them at the very start and then change them on the fly using the add remove leagues feature that can be gathered on the drop down here. And you can do all sorts of cool stuff from this menu. Sadly, the game doesn't currently have the ability for you to add players, but not the leagues in the middle of a save that has to be done before the save actually begins. Although that would be a cracking feature to have in a future release of Football Manager. One thing you can do when loading leagues in the middle of a save is set them to view only. And I promise we talk about view only. So let's do that because I have some theories. View only gives you the bare minimum detail about a league when it is selected. And of course, you can't manage it, but you will still get league tables and stats. However, one of the biggest issues with it for me is that over time, things tend to degrade quite a lot to the point where the top scorer in the league has like three goals. The teams aren't scoring enough because they don't actually have any players because the players are being phased out, but they're not being replaced by the database because it doesn't have the detail level that it requires. Eventually, you reach the point where teams have entire grayed out squads and it's kind of a little bit pointless honestly and that comes around quite soon. I've not had a chance to test this next thing as thoroughly as I would like so make of this information what you will but I still think it's kind of interesting. When setting up a brand new save it is also possible to set a league as view only as I'm sure most of you are aware. However there is one thing you can do here which is when you go into custom database and set it to advance you can also give it the option to load specific divisions. So what I've done here is I've actually loaded the players specifically from the Romanian top flight and the Romanian second tier which is the two leagues that I've got set to view only over here. Ignore the fact that they're out of order. That's just Football Manager. One thing I can say for certain though is with your main league set to playable and then a smattering of other leagues and nations set to view only with the players from the divisions you've got set actually loaded into the game, it is a hell of a lot faster than having them set to playable, which isn't entirely surprising, but it is massively quicker. What I don't yet have a clear idea on is the long-term effects as to whether having the players loaded through the database makes any difference to that degradation that I talked about earlier. I have this save file, which is simmed 15 years into the future using that exact setup with the league loaded as view only, but the players then loaded on top of that. And you'll notice that, well, the league is mostly made up of regens, which I don't think would have happened before. The statistics look a lot healthier than they normally do in some of these view only leagues. We're still getting decent numbers of goals scored as well as the points are looking pretty solid and when you actually go through the clubs themselves you'll notice that there is a couple of grayed out players in some of the teams but for the most part they do still have a decent sized squad on most of the teams even those that were almost certainly not playing in Europe at any point during the save so that would suggest to me that they actually are replacing those players this obviously requires a lot more testing but it does potentially suggest that there is a viable option that maybe if you wanted to have a save say with Ajax in this case where it was the playable league but you still want to see results from some of the other leagues and be able to keep up with some of their statistics you could turn those leagues on as view only, but then load the players specifically from those divisions on top of the other stuff, because I don't believe this would work without it, and actually have a really nice, concise database that still runs relatively fast and doesn't get bogged down in some of the other detritus that happens. But again, that's something that would require a lot more testing. But some of this stuff, certainly the early indications look that that might well very much be the case. Because you'll see they've all got under 19 squads as well, so they're continuing to produce regens that are filling these leagues up, and they're not just going to rely on grayed out players for the most part. I hope this video has been helpful helpful in some way. If it has, drop a like on it. That'd be lovely. If you're new to the channel, subscribe and happy database setter upper ring. I guess that's a weird, that's a weird word.